This is the whitefish story. Uh, I, I'm going to just put it up for a split second. Um, we report numbers of FIPS this, numbers of FIPS that, and everyone else who's not really looking at the detail, their eyes glaze over and they're like, well, you know, how do I know that's really doing anything? And that's a good question because, frankly, you know, you've got to look at the outcome and the results and measure. The graph at the bottom right, so the graph at the, bottom, the top left says, oh, look, we went from four stocks certified to 27. So big whoop. Great. Were they all good condition for, to start with? No, I made that point. A lot of them were heavily depleted. The key graph's the bottom right. This is total biomass of adult whitefish alive in the world. Uh, essentially, we almost doubled, we, the whitefish industry that led these efforts, almost doubled the amount of adult whitefish swimming around in the world's oceans in the space of about a decade. So there was rebuilding of Barents Sea Cod, Russian Pollock, squeeze on IUU, was different stocks coming back in South America, uh, etc. It goes on. So when people ask, well, how do you know this works? How do you know the FIPS are working? We're tracking that. We're looking at it in terms of biomass, bycatch reduction, endangered species getting better off, MPAs. That is happening, uh, even though we then tend to just report percentage FIP, which uh, is, is a little bit harder to get. So by 2015, we felt there was a lot of momentum. We saw in new industry partners emerging in many parts of the world. It wasn't just a whitefish story. In fact, it had ceased to be just a whitefish story in 2008-9. Um, but the whitefish story gave an example of what could happen if enough of the industry came together and agreed on a common set of priorities to go chase. They could change the world. They could change the world. That's what they did. So we thought, well, you know, let's see if we can get the rest of the industry excited about this. Maybe there are other seafood sectors, other types of seafood, where a little bit of organization and a little bit of a push, we can emulate what happened in whitefish. And that's where we come back to Target 75. We looked at every sector out there and we said, where is there industry leverage that either exists or we think can be built that can lead to the same sort of story of lots of fisheries and aquaculture improvement projects? And we have examples from fish meal, from squid, from tuna, from snapper grouper, from octopus. Uh, the, the entire US industry got organized on blue swimming crab and famously runs it themselves through, through the National Fisheries Institute Crab Council. Um, and we looked at all of that and said, you know what? Let's be big and bold. We've got to communicate this. This is an issue for the seafood industry writ large. There's always bad news stories out there. Always will be you are never going to solve all the bad actors. There's always going to be bad stories out there. But you can put a big dent in it, and you can show an overwhelmingly good story at a global scale and change the narrative. But you have to put a clear target out there. You have to align the industry uh, behind some common strategic targets. And, and that's what we did with T75.